have you ever been going along in your life and suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, you get this feeling, I need to change direction. There's someplace different to go. There's something different I want to do in my life. You're in the right place at the right time. I'm Reverend Natalie Bierman, and this is Let's Get Metaphysical, connecting heart and mind, which is what's happening when you're following that feeling. And our very special guest today is Mayana Kingery. Now, you saw her way back when I first started doing this show, which was almost three years ago. And she's here today because I can't think of anybody with more clarity about direction and what leads you to go from one place to the other. And I'm going to introduce her, but let her tell you about three things in her life that very few people, maybe even nobody else knows. So welcome, welcome to our show, Mayana. Thank you, Allie. It's so good to be with you. Good to see your smiling face. I love you. <laughs> so, what three things would you like to share with us that you think people don't really know about you? Because I know every time I'm following you or with you, there's always another wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about this overnight as I was preparing to talk with you. And one thing that people don't, may not know is that when I worked for the highway safety department in Idaho and I was a bike ped and emergency services grants officer for the federal highway safety department. And I, I had a vision to create a commercial to get high school students to wear bike helmets because whenever somebody died on a bike or a pedestrian, I was the first one notified and it really just got my heart, teenagers getting hit on a bicycle or falling and hitting their heads and being damaged for life. So with, with the team that was there, I, create, I wrote and created this commercial and hired students from Arts West High School, private arts high school there in Meridian or in Eagle, and produced this video that won a national award. The National Highway Traffic Safety Commission awarded that that commercial was the best in the nation. And, you know, that's that was fun. And I got to give some students credit on an award-winning video. So it helped their careers because they were wanting to be actors. And it showed them riding bicycle helmets on their bikes on the green belt and it being cool to wear a helmet. So that was fun. Another thing people might not know is I I came from a really poor background. You know, I was on the wrong side of the tracks. And, and in high school, in 10th grade, in Caldwell, Idaho, these people came to the school to do makeovers. And they were doing hair and makeup. And I volunteered. And my long, straight hair that I'd always had got cut into a Tony Tennille. Do you remember Tony Tennille? Yeah, yeah. And her hair, how it was curved, curled under and, you know, she, little below shoulder length and, you know, curled under at the bangs. So I had a Tony Tennille haircut and I felt so wonderful about myself. <laughs> how exciting. Yeah. And I, I remember... I remember who I am, where I've been. I know where I'm going. I remember my past lives. I remember being other um, perspectives of myself and have learned how to integrate that um, into my physical life here because it's not about who I was. It's about knowing what I knew. And that helped me to be the best me I can be. That's so exciting because I live that way too. There's always something very striking when I'm with you. Like the last time we talked about that amazing tree that you painted. That oh, yeah, do you want to see it again? I can show it again. Yeah, that's 
And hang it up on the ceiling when I and look look who's up there. Can you see that? I see that I she's can a, she's it's a talking stick that I added ba a baby robin died in my yard and I put its wings on her and she has traveled with us across the world and she's going on our hardest journey with us to Europe again <laughs> for the second time. So. There's so many exciting things, so many places to go. How about we jump into what's your hardest journey about? Oh, well, in, in 2017, we got the first call. I was at Mount Shasta and got a download. When I get a download, and so the mountain and the beings there were, were speaking to me, but it's not verbal, it's sensation. And it comes through in vibration. And then I have to interpret it as the days go by. And it took uh, about six months to really understand what I was being asked to do. And it was about connecting the heart and the root directly. And in my work in the Blue Lotus Chakra Bloom um, that you could reference, but I don't want to go into it right now, is the heart and the root in our chakras connect directly. So I understood, okay, Mother Earth's chakras need to connect the heart and the root directly. So we found out that um, Dobo Goku Hungary that translates meaning the heart beating stone. Hungary has the most mineral waters in the world. The nation is shaped like a heart. The Danube flows through and curves around and goes south, just as if it's making a heart. And right in the center of that is Dobogokur. And at first, we couldn't find any information about Hungary and the heart. And then we found some elders there. After about six, eight months, I found some elders there that say we're the heart. And then two months before we left, the Dalai Lama went there and said, you can hear the mother's heartbeat on this stone. And then Glastonbury, England at Chalice Well, I knew that people considered that the heart. And I've seen maps of the chakras and that's where the heart was located. So I was feeling into this and I was guided. I just felt like I needed to draw it on a map and draw circles around the two places and see how they overlap. And it came to me that they're the, the masculine and feminine heart of Mother Earth, that the the feminine heart in Hungary, where the heart beating stone is the masculine point within it, and chalice well is the feminine point within the masculine heart in Glastonbury, England. So the this, this feminine heart had been closed down because of Stalin communism, and you know, there was no awareness of the mother and the heart in Hungary. So we went and we had ceremony and we traveled across the Europe and it was just a really wonderful thing. And by the time we got home, the Me Too movement had launched and it was no longer okay to treat women at work as if they were sexual objects or less than the men. So I'm like, wow, that's confirmation. So now we've been called to go a second time and this time we'll be in Glastonbury on Earth Day, April 22nd. And we're also doing some global medicine wheel work where people can be all over the globe, wherever they are. Add your heartbeat. Mother Earth is at the point where she is ready to birth something new. She's in the pro birthing process. World Water Day, March 22nd, was the first wave of our global medicine wheel. And it's like the waters, mother's waters, the, the pregnancy, the amniotic fluid of mother. We gathered water from the convergence of the new river. So the north and south forks of the new river come together to make the full new river, which is the oldest river in the world. And it's in Appalachia, in Boone, North Carolina. So we gathered waters from there had ceremony that day on World Water Day, and now we're taking that water to Chalice Well, 
and to the Danube. So, and and taking waters from Chalice Well and from the Danube to mix with it together for the purpose is not so much healing of Mother Earth. She's birthing something new, but she needs support. And it's humanity that has caused her all her trauma. So it has to happen through human consciousness, that humans have to be aware of what their relationship is with her, our mother, that all nature is mother nature. We all come from mother. And it's like acupuncture points all over the globe that release the tension. So when she's in these birth pangs, humanity can still thrive and survive because if we don't, she'll shake us off. She'll, she'll rock and roll and shake in her birthing this new thing. Um, and humanity may not do so well. But if we can get enough people to be acupuncture points and people gathered together on Earth Day as nodes, so it's like you know a whole bunch of them make a node in a ceremony together, she will be able to birth this and will be able to be in harmony with her. It's, it's so perfect. Since I moved to Connecticut, I've become very active in the environment. And there I couldn't believe how many organizations there are here and how much legislation we're able to get through because of the activity. And I find that many of the groups I'm aware of are senior citizens because we have the time and the energy to devote to it. We also have the grandchildren. We want to enjoy the clean environment. And there was one very, very cool woman. I don't remember where she was in government, but she's encouraging us to have all of our state representatives and senators propose, actually vote in uh, an amendment to the state constitution saying it's our right to have clean air and clean water and a healthy yeah. environment. And that's like, can you imagine if we could get that done across the whole country, across the world? Across the world. It's not only our right, it's our responsibility. It's our privilege. You know, we have to recognize that humans have caused great harm to Mother Earth. And we've come really close to annihilation several times, and we're at that choice point again. And if we can rise up together, so I feel her energy rising up through me. And it, it, it is, it's like the roots drawing up the liquid to make for a tree, you know, like a tree draws up the, the fluids from Mother Earth and the waters. So if we can each allow her to come up through us and not put our ideas of what that might be or look like or feel like. Well, as we were driving to Boone on World Water Day and I was like, wow, what is she birthing? What is this new thing that we can't comprehend? I still didn't comprehend it, but I had this feeling of, wow, that's it? Cool. <laughs> wow, you're so awesome. <laughs> I still don't know what it is, but it's like a new dimension. It's like third, fourth, and fifth dimensions merging together into something new so we can live in this world in our full awareness and in harmony with each other and nature and the nature spirits and the higher angelic purposes and the human being aligning the human heartbeat with her heartbeat. So the hardest journey invites people to add your heartbeat and add your voice. Think about this often, that there's more, way more wisdom in plants and trees and the trees have been like encased in ice and now things are budding out. And I was just walking around and 
I might be the only person in my neighborhood who does that. So I was thinking yesterday, I can't walk with other people because I have to stop every few feet and like observe something <laughs> and get a communication from it. And that's what I was doing in the yard yesterday. It's so nice. Some are already blossoming and it's just, it's such a strong vibration. It's such a wonder how they can shut down, but they're not dying. And they make it through really severe weather. And a lot of branches were blown off in high winds. And it's, they're just have this knowing. And you and I were talking before about knowings. Can you explain it so our listeners have a different perspective other than mine? Sure. So knowing is something that it's yours. Nobody can ever take that away from you. A belief can change when you learn new information. So I, I, I don't believe anything. I know what I know. And when I know that I know that I know it, it's true for me. So I, how do I know when I need to make a change in my life I feel, I, I actually feel to turn and go this way instead of this way, or go talk to this person and stay away from this person. It's a feeling that can't be comprehended by the mind sometimes, but I, I, I was trained, my inner training, my you know, I, I haven't been trained by other humans so much. I haven't gone to classes and schools and stuff for that. I went inside because Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is within. And I believed that, you know, and I was raised in Christianity and I'm not any longer that because I've gone beyond it because it's not what he taught. But I, I wanted to know who are these beings that are considered my family? And I went within and I was trained, oh, turn right, turn left, drive dr as I'm driving, turn left here, turn right here, go in that store and something would happen. So I, I took that practice as a training of, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to follow my inner GPS system. So so I I developed eventually, you know, working with Barbara Marks Hubbard's Wheel of Co-Creation, I developed 12 spheres of influence for the person, the individual, where you can get to know 12 aspects of yourself that are here to help create your human life experience. And they're not always in harmony because like if you have in your past a dragon slayer and a dragon, both on the council, they might be fighting each other and not too happy. So it's about going into those other realms and figuring out how can my life here support them both so they can become harmonized with each other through me. So I teach people how to do that. What's the best way uh, for people to find you so they can follow you and be part of what you're sh sharing with us? Well, our main nonprofit website where you can find out the information about harmonizing yourself, your community, and programs that we have is peaceproduction.org. And it's singular because there's only one peace to produce in the heart of humanity. Our journey that we're taking, we have a Facebook group called, the Facebook page called Heartist, H-E-A-R-T-I-S-T. -E and then we have a website, Heartist.us. And that's all about this journey that we're taking and the add your heartbeat and add your voice. So when people have their own knowings from Mother Earth that are coming through, they can share that with us and we'll publish in in a book after the journey we're going to publish the hardest journey book and we're offering people the opportunity to share what they receive from mother 
And then we have the Global Medicine Wheels. So there's a Facebook group called Global Medicine Wheel, where we share the, th it's three waves of a Global Medicine Wheel. Wherever you are, you choose your direction. The Native American Medicine Wheel is focused on north, south, east, west, above, below, and within. So you can choose any of those directions, all of the above, anything in between. You can say, I'm going to stand in the northeast or the southwest or the whatever, or the in and out. <laughs> you choose your direction and you stand with Mother Earth on Earth Day. That's the acupuncture needle, the acupuncture point where you say, I'm standing with Mother Earth and I'm letting this energy that she needs to let release flow out through me. So, oh, and the third wave. So the first wave was March 22nd, World Water Day. The second wave is April 22nd, Earth Day. And that's when we'll be in Glastonbury at Chalice Well. And some are joining us there. Anyone's welcome to. It's not formal. It's just a gathering of souls and a gathering of hearts. And then the third wave, there's a little space in between. And it's June 21st. And that's for International Children's Month, their focal day, June 21st. And that's the third wave. So by then, we hope humanity all across the globe will be harmonized and there will be so many changes we won't even recognize this world. So many good things will be happening and growing. That's so totally everything comes together because there's all this hoopla going on about the eclipse, the solar eclipse. And there are five eclipses like every year that happen, but solar eclipses, they're pretty rare. And there are... They're called citizen scientist groups all over the place. And I was just reading about them yesterday who do all the work because the scientists don't have the time to collect it all. So citizens all over, it's like all these acupuncture points, it all fits together. So that's in a more mainstream, but in the big picture, it's really all the same thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, I just read this morning the Hopi have put out their perspective of eclipses, and they say that the eclipse is the time when the sun and the moon really come together to communicate with each other completely and totally. And it's it's like, give them some privacy. This is a time to go within. This isn't a time to go watch and listen to them. It's a time to let them communicate with each other, go within, give them their space, and then they'll come out with new information for us on the other side of it. And I thought that was interesting. I, I repeat um, what you just said. Uh, I listen to a lot of science podcasts, mm -hmm. and they were talking about people who aren't able to see, so they're blind or low vision, it's listening, because what goes on during an eclipse, if you're listening, you hear what's going on in nature, and it's taking it in with your whole body, with all your senses, and we're just not taught to do that in the big picture, and that's what's been missing, and your work is bringing us all into all of that, so I'm just so grateful to know you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Sally. I'm grateful to know you too and to see your growth and changes through the years and how you really do help people thrive. And, you know, that's been one of your sayings is thrive, don't just survive. And through all that you've been through and all you've grown through, it's so beautiful to behold. And I'm glad to walk with you on this lovely planet. <laughs> That's so cool. Thank you for mentioning that because actually on May 2nd, it's my 10 year anniversary for the book. And what I've learned since the book 10 years ago, I need to do some updating in it. It's also the third year anniversary of this show. So it's a really big deal day. I think you're probably the only person who has an awareness of the book and all that's 
Well, all that's been changing for me and the extent of who I'm able to reach. It's like, so there's no such thing as distance. And I wish you were closer, but I've also spoken before of there's no such thing as distance because we can just know we're connected and immediately we're connected, which is a whole lot faster than getting in the car. Right. And when, when we tune our inner intuition and our knowings, the, then it's like the internet is practice for the internet. Because we may have a time when we don't have this technology, but we can still meet in our hearts at and communicate with each other and know how each other are doing. And, oh, I, I, need, I need to call Allie or I need to go see Allie or I need to go here or there. Somebody needs me. And we can know it in our hearts. So the practice of this distance communication can help us to really develop our inner net. That's, I'm just thinking of all these times throughout my family when that's certainly been fact. So yeah. I'm so grateful that you were able to spend some time with us. And oh, I know you're going to have an extraordinary trip. As an energy um practitioner i wanted to throw out with i've been aware for a long time that hungry seems to be the center where all this wisdom health-wise is coming from yes yeah hungary i mean like the first trolleys were in hungary they they have the first bridge like the san francisco golden gate bridge they do they're just they're, they're engineers, scientists, and designers, brilliant. They're, they're a people different from all the other people in the world, and their language is separate from the language tree. It's like the root of all languages. And it's interesting, here's something people won't know, is that while we're in Hungary, and we'll be there at Dobogo Kerr on April 30th for Andras, my partner's 30th birthday, 80th birthday, sorry, 30th, his 80th birthday, and May 1st, and then I'm getting seven crowns on my teeth in Hungary. I can get seven crowns for the price of one in the U.S. with insurance. <laughs> so so I, Andras's cousin makes teeth, and he's referred us to the best dentist in Budapest, and I'm going to get seven crowns. So I have to make sure my crown is straight because energetically, seven crowns on top of that, if I'm not aligned here, could flip me over. So I'm doing everything I can to be in my alignment for going and getting the seven crowns on my teeth <laughs> and coming home with the minerals of Hungary in my mouth. Wow. And that's no accident, seven. It's... I can hardly wait to learn about that experience and what changes for you. Oh, me too. I'm I'm really excited. And and we're going to spend a lot of time in the healing waters there because there are more spas in Hungary than anywhere else in the world. And I'm going to just really be nurturing and taking care of myself through that. We'll be there, I think, two and a half weeks. And then I get to go back to England and see my sons in England and spend a few days with them before coming back home. Wow, it's exciting. Yeah. Well, I thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being you because I learned so much from you and I think the world learns a whole lot from you. And it's important yeah. to get this out. This will definitely be the next show that's released to the live on Monday. Thank you, Alan. I want to thank all of you again for joining us here today. And remember to join our Facebook group where you can ask questions, make a new friend. And I put extras in there in addition to the show every week. When you go to our show page, you can listen to or watch any episode. And I'll also note the first episode that we had with Mayanna. Uh, it, this will all be everything mentioned will be in the show notes, of course. And um, when you're looking at what do you want to choose for the gift that Audible gives you? When you click my link, you get a free Audible 
audio book and 30 days to look through the whole site. And you need that 30 days because there's a whole lot of stuff there that you won't find any place else. Remember to enjoy every moment because nothing in your world happens outside of you and it all happens within. I look forward to being here with you next time.